Do you know what Wade whispered in Jin's ear? <laughs> <laughs> Bill Murray, tell me what he told, um, what's her name? Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Lost in translation. Yeah, so I, to- so I said that. No, I'm only kidding. Okay. He's joking. Well, you can sort of, I'm never going to say what it is, but you have to remember how devastated she was after her beautiful ideas didn't transpire as well as they would have liked. And he's a very driven individual. And he doesn't, he sees what happened to that particular plan. Keep it ambiguous. As a uh, as a blip in as a that that battle may have been lost, but the war continues. So it may have had some reference to that. And maybe it didn't. <laughs> is that ambiguous? <laughs> yeah. Is that ambiguous oh, yeah. enough? Love for you? it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so on the day, Liam literally didn't say anything. He just like made his lips move. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that was all imagination. <laughs> In my opinion, I think because it's the last episode, it should be something that, that leads on to Wade's future plans. So yeah, it could be something like uh, what he said in episode six about the, not being over for them. You know, there's still more work for them to do. But all I know is in that moment, Jin is going through so much having watched Will Spring <laughs> go out there and the whole experiment essentially fail, so it was more letting all those emotions cascade over top um, and what he said was just like a trigger for that all to come out. I'm just devastated that he did not, I think, whisper that Will's brain was not actually on there because I'm in denial that his brain is lost. Okay. <laughs> You're in denial. You need to have a chat with yourself. Hey, it's all quantum. You can do whatever you want. Absolutely, quantum mechanics. I'm not getting any younger. If Jin had made it in time um, before Will finished consenting the forms, do you think he would have gone through with the staircase project? I do, um, because that at that point, that's all he can really... Maybe he would have delayed it slightly, but he still would have done it. The reason he wants to do it is not to save humanity. It's not to fight the Santi, it's, it's for her. But he's quite happy, and this is the beautiful thing about Will, and why I find him such a, he's like a, quite a quiet hero, is that it's, he's okay, he loves her so much, he's okay with it being anonymous, uh, an, an anonymous gesture of love, because he knows that there would be some kind of uh, burden with her um, knowing the full motivation behind him doing it. So he wants to like set her free of that, which I think, is, you know, that's love, is like uh, um, maybe being able to let someone go. I think he's not, his love is not possessive, um, which I think is really, I just find very moving. Because I don't feel any loyalty to the human race. Do you think there's nothing she could have said that would have changed his mind? Oh, I've never thought of this. I mean, she, yeah, she could have said, actually, we found someone else and they're better suited because of A, B, C and D. So actually, I want their brain more, which would have really sucked because <laughs> he's dying anyways and he wants to give her this gift. But I think in that case, he would have yet again sacrificed. She's so ambitious and sort of uh, achievement driven. You know, she wants to be like an incredible scientist who breaks ground. He always worked big. And he, because that's what she wants the most, of course, on some level, he wishes it was him. But because he, he loves her, he wants her to, you know, he wants to help her achieve that. So I think he, yeah, if she'd found someone with a better brain, good luck, because he's, <laughs> he's in the Oxford Five, so he's pretty sharp upstairs. But uh, yeah, I think maybe under those circumstances. We hope you're enjoying your flight, Mr. Wade. You know, we see Wade at the end get the very disturbing visit from Sofan. So how does this interaction um, affect his goals, if at all? Well, it's, what's interesting is the first time, the only time he's ever come across Sofon was uh, during the game. And next of all, she appears on his personal mode of transport and uh, imparts this knowledge to him that he's, he's part of this thing and maybe of use, uh, which is an interesting thing that I'm sure he wasn't expecting. If you were watching me, I must be doing something right. They're almost talking about him like an ally, aren't they, in a sense? or that he's useful and, and uh, he's a clever man or whatever, that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting to see where this will go. 
And we are not privy to that information yet, even as actors, because that's season two stuff. So we, we wait and see with bated breath where this particular uh, avenue is going to go. Hello, Dr. Yeah. It seems like she was ready to possibly end her life there. Um, and I'm wondering how did seeing Tatiana appear and knowing that um, the Lord sent her affect her decision? I don't think she was expecting to see Tatiana. Mm. And I, I also feel that um, she was trying to capitalize a bit. I, I think Ye has learned how to be one step ahead yes. at all times. And I think as soon as she sees Tatiana, she's still an optimist in some ways. So I don't think she expected for the cop to be killed. I don't know if she fully expected for Tatiana to arrive. But once she did arrive, I think she was capitalizing on that maternal relationship that she knew Tatiana would respond to. And I think she was hoping for some information from Tatiana as well. You've worked so hard. But it was bittersweet. I think yes. it was a bittersweet moment. Would you like to hear a joke? You know, we see Dr. Ye visit uh, Saul before she goes to China. I'm wondering, you know, after the wall facer uh, assignment, has he been trying to decipher, you know, the Einstein joke told to her, uh, told to him, and also have you tried to decipher that? Oh man, when I first read it, I didn't understand it. I mean, of course, but the good thing is, is that we have showrunners to explain things to us like children. <laughs> <laughs> Some jokes are so private, they only make sense to two people. But I think I saw 100%, even in the scene, as, as, as she delivers this, this joke, I feel like he can tell that there, it's clearly a loaded statement and it means something else. He just doesn't know quite what it is. Mm -hmm. And even when he does get an idea of what he thinks it could be, uh, I think that he kind of keeps it in within himself until he's really, really sure. It's very nuanced, and, and I think that's just a testament to, to the writing of David, Dan, and Alex, and how, they, and how they're uh, giving information to our audience. And would you say he believes that that conversation was a big part of why he became, um, he was chosen to be wall -based? Mm, Perhaps. <laughs> Who can say? Perhaps. Who can say? <laughs> right? It doesn't make sense. I am a low-level researcher. But th that's, that's a very strong possibility, yeah. And when they're up against an enemy that powerful, he was capable of doing those sort of things. It seems almost insurmountable uh, calamity that's going to, that uh, that is visited upon them. It, it'll be interesting to see where it goes.